Welcome to our channel. We want to take this chance to welcome you to this channel and uh, share your views on the business side that you do. Uh, so, Lucas is a, a business person. She's involved in a lot of social enterprises. Uh, she has also been involved in uh, microfinance and she's also a philanthropist. So, to our viewers, we want to share Docker's story with you. Uh, so, to tell us about yourself. Uh, what is it? that you do. Anas, thank you so much for having me in your channel. I'm Dokas from Kenya uh, and I'm an entrepreneur and I also do a lot of different stuff. So in the aspect as you asked about entrepreneurship, yes, in the background of uh, having worked with the financial institutions, that is the bank, uh, the circles. Um, after that, I left and started doing my own stuff, started to do my own business. And with that, I realized there was a need that the financial institutions were not doing. Well, they are doing part of it, but uh, the idea that I had was to have uh, the target people, which are the rural women, to be able to acquire assets. Most of the financial institutions give money. The end result is these women are able to get these loans and maybe pay the school fees, but you find they don't have assets like water tanks and maybe what you can see, this is a small household stuff that they are able to get. So for as little as uh, $3 a week, they are able to to pull it together and we are able to help them get the assets that they need in their households. So how do you make profit uh, from this? Is, is this something that you make profit on or is it something that you're just helping your community? Yes, we do. We do earn some profit out of it. This is a social enterprise. And uh, the, uh, when I say social enterprise, it means there's a benefit that these people are also getting. And as there's also something as well, we are earning out of it. So we get uh, we get to have our suppliers who supply. We get things, uh, the assets on wholesale price, and then we sell to them. And uh, the advantage we give them is to pay slowly. So they give us with an interest. So we earn from the interest that we get from from the assets, yeah. To all of you are sitting out there wanting to get into business, what has been your experience about starting a business? Obviously, you have background in working in microfinance and you have background working as an entrepreneur, but also you have a background working as an employee, working in a bank. Put together all that um, experience, you ended up moving from being an employee to being an employer. What has been your experience? What has been your journey like? Well, uh, it has been an exciting one. Now, coming to start my own business, there are things that I came to realize that I didn't know was happening in me. First, I realized I had low self-esteem. Why I'm saying that is because I was so afraid, uh, will the people... Uh, like accept it. Uh, I, I wasn't even confident about myself. Secondly, is to believe in myself. So many things happened to me, but the deepest one is realizing who I was. And that is something I'm so grateful that uh, I entered into business and got to know myself for it. So if someone is wondering why they are not into business and one says to themselves, no, I'm not into business because I don't have money. I need to start. It, it was just real as what happened to me because I, I was not ready to, to leave employment then. I, I was forced to be out. When you're employed, the employer just gives you enough money. If you're paid monthly, if you're paid weekly, he just gives you enough money to sustain you. Here in Kenya, we do most of it in terms of monthly. So for us, you'll be paid enough money to cater for your bills. And uh, then you have to come back to the next month. Yes, there are some incentives. So when I came out of employment, I, I, I was not, I didn't have enough money to start. In fact, the only money that I, I, I had was 1,000 Kenya shillings. So that one is, is, is like $10. It's not the capital that really like matters most, it's the idea and they believe in yourself. Pretty much most people say, I'm not into business because starting a business costs a lot of money. And I get your response that money is not the main thing. The main thing is that you need to have an idea. Uh, once you have an idea, you can pretty much start any business. So 
Starting a business then in that particular case means that you need to have an idea and that idea needs to generate money. In other words, people must be willing to give you money. So mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that women face in business, starting a business? And what would you advise someone uh, who is who's a woman sitting at home and wanting to also start a business? What, what would you advise them to do? Those are different several questions you have asked, but I'll address this as in the aspect of uh, being a woman as an entrepreneur. And uh, the other one question was the uh, aspect of uh, what advice would I maybe give those who are maybe feel uh, may not be that necessary and comfortable being employed. Well, you, you are the solution for a problem in that particular area or sector. So you failing to start uh, the business you are denying a solution to somebody. And God has given you a gift and that idea is originally from God. So I really encourage somebody to move out despite the challenges, you have the solution to a problem. So get out and do it. The other challenge that uh, maybe I, I faced as I started the business as a woman entrepreneur is uh, sometimes, uh, <laughs> I think in our culture, uh, women are, are basically followers. Uh, we, we, we support our men. And somehow coming out of your, of your cocoon and starting your own idea without having a man figure, like supporting you, that would be a, a real challenge. But as I said, it, it really helped me get to know who I am and realize the purpose. Why am I here? So the challenges are there as a woman entrepreneur. You'll find an area dominated by men or certain, like mostly like the, the, where we buy the water tanks is only a particular tribe. I mean, a particular the Asian community that manufacture the tanks. Uh, hardly do you find an African, I mean, an, a Kenyan person who does that. So there, there are different challenges that we face, but I think is when you get to know who you are and what you're doing, what your purpose is, you'll be able to overcome these challenges. That would be the first step. And that is what has really helped me overcome the challenges I've faced as an entrepreneur. I think that most people who are listening will actually be inspired to see someone who has started a business and gone on to learn a lot and be willing to share. Yeah. Also, in terms of leadership, uh, you have to learn to be a leader. I think you have rightly said that in some instances, some women are generally followers, so they find it. Uh, difficult to be a leader for the first time. Uh, yeah. In that particular case, um, what advice would you give them to be able to venture out or is there a path that you found easy uh, or is there some steps that you can share to come out of the cocoon, as you, as you said? Well, uh, let me just be honest and share my, my journey in that is... Uh, uh, in our local local assembly in church where we do fellowship, we started a Bible study and um, getting to study the word of God is really what has really helped me know. When I read Proverbs 31, uh, it was this uh, woman that, uh, the ideal woman. And when I read that, the, the, the part, there's these verses that it talked that this woman would wake up early and take care of the, even the, the people who work for her. She's an international woman. She is generous. She is hardworking. She is prudent. When I read that, I, I came to realize it's, it's not that I'm coming to be. I am already, I am. I have these things inside me. So it's me to unleash this potential and leave it. So that really helped me until I had to create an image of myself. I took a nice photo of myself and wrote those verses, those parts at the end, uh, I mean, behind my portrait. So that every time that I wake up, I look at the mirror, I see who I am. I'm a prudent woman. I have integrity. I am hardworking. I'm an international woman. I'm generous. You know, all those. So that with time helped me now start believing in myself and getting forward. So no matter the challenge I face, I say, I'm a woman of integrity. I'm an international woman. I mean, I'm a global woman. No, it's not the village that I come from. It's not the country that I am, but I'm a person that is global. Yeah, that is what really has 
honestly helped me. And reading books, I read a lot of books. Yeah, or if, if I'm not able to read, every time I'm doing my house chores, I'm listening to a video, listening to people who, who will advise you because you may not know everything. So I'm eagerly like listening every time to motivational, inspiration, and then surrounding myself with people who are of influence that I'm always looking for. And I can get good advice. So that's, those are the things that have really helped me now start moving from where I was, from looking myself from a village girl or, uh, you know, yeah, to another level. That's what has really helped me. Is there any book that you would recommend people on this channel to pick up and read books that helped you or people that you listen to on videos? Who are these people? I've, I've read several books and uh, one key person that I listen so much, I, I see him as a mentor, is uh, David Oyedepo. I mean, uh, uh, why I, I listen to him much is uh, he's a global, a global man. The aspect of him starting, the who has one of the biggest church in the world and how he runs it with less stress. I mean, he's a man that I look up to wanting to learn how he does these things. So he's one person that I, I listen to. There's a, a Miles Munro, he's late. I listen to a lot of him. Uh, there are several, there's so many people out there that you can, you can really associate yourself with. And there's this lady that I listen that helped me much in, uh, she's called Dr. She talks much about the mind issue. I listen to her a lot. So in different stages, what I really want to, I Google and get to check out. I read a lot book, uh, many books of uh, Miles Monroe as well. There's John Maxwell. I read a lot of his book. Let's move on. Uh, we also have people who are listening to this to our channel who are just coming from school. And uh, sometimes people are so disappointed because they have not succeeded in school. But equally, you find on the other side of the spectrum, there are people who have succeeded well at school. Is there any bearing that you have found between succeeding in school or failing in school and vis-a-vis -vis your ability mm -hmm. to do business. In other words, in short, does your success at school translate mm -hmm. to you being a good entrepreneur? Since you have been an entrepreneur, you've gone through this, how has been your experience vis-a-vis -vis your education? Did your education help absolutely for you to uh, become a good entrepreneur? Well, for me in school, I was an average student. Uh, and being an average student, uh, and also from the research, maybe have really like checked out, most of the average student are make good entrepreneurs. But that doesn't mean that when great intelligence, you can't make it in business. You can. Uh, the thing is, is what you learn from school. I think it's more than just education, the, the paper, you learning, you know, different, but the this, this skill, the this skill of uh, how just to do numbers, the basic skills that you really need. So it doesn't really qualify. You have to be an A person so that you can succeed in business. It doesn't really matter. Is a skill that you learn, the discipline, the discipline of waking up, starting something and finishing. Those are the major skills. I, I remember when we used to have the, we used to be sent uh, success cards when you're almost finishing a certain level. And there's one card that one would send and say, determination knows no barrier. Yeah. So is, is the aspect of you being determined. Those are the skills that you work so hard. The pressure you are given in school, those are the skills you learn that will help you out there so that you can be able to be a person or an entrepreneur who is prudent and who is different. So it's the skill that you learn from school that will really help you to be able to navigate out in life. Yeah. Some people say, you know, uh, business is so much of a hassle. I don't think I can do it. Uh, do you... Do you think business is for everyone or there are some people who are born with a business mindset or uh, business can be learned? What, what, what is your take on this? Is entrepreneurship mm -hmm. something that can be learned or? Well, I think I'll answer both. <laughs> Maybe there are people, just as you say, people you ask, uh, is someone born a leader or do they, you know, such? So I think even in entrepreneurship, 
it, it can be a both case. Well, in, in, in starting up, uh, going back to the question you asked me about students, I think if you first get to identify your strength, and mostly this happens when you, you know, get to, to, to be with people or institutions that are, you can be able to even attach or even volunteer yourself so that you can be able to get to know your basic strength. And then now from there, you can be able to start off. Yeah, because there are some things that I think uh, from the experience I've had that, are, that need to be developed in you so that now when you venture into business, you don't really give up. Yeah, it's, it's the aspect of learning these resilient things so that now when you venture or start something, you don't give up. So as a person who has who is really like starting off as a school person that you, you just recently graduated, volunteer yourself somewhere. I mean, work for someone for free. And, and then maybe you get here, you get to realize, I think I love teaching. I, I love music. I love, you know, you, you, you get to learn, this is what is my strength. And from where your passion is, is where maybe you can develop your business as that. Yeah. So in that aspect, when you love something so much, I mean, it will be a little bit hard to give up on it because you can do it freely because you really love it. Yeah. I also yeah, sure. know that you are a philanthropist. I, I think it's part of your, your giving to the community. Well, first, um, you don't give because you have. You give because, okay, it's, 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 it's not that you have a lot of it that makes you give. It's the heart. It's the heart that really makes you have the desire to give out, the love of people. And in any entrepreneurship or anything that you really you do, is all about people. So what we do as, a, as an institution, we are called IACT Investments. Uh, the women that we work with, we try to challenge them to look within their community, a needy person. And this needy person, we look at in terms of a widow who is old, above 80, above 80 years old, who is old or orphans. So what we do basically is going with these women, just have household, I mean, food and be a blessing to this elderly person or these children. Because our education in Kenya currently is, is subsidized, is free. So most of them are able still to, if they are children, they are able to go to school. And uh, so it's, it's, it's not really a big cost as of now, mostly in the lower level of education. So what we do basically after we identify that need, we and uh, together with our women, we visit and be a blessing to them. And in case we find there's something that needs to be continued, like the aspect of school fees, the aspect of maybe medical care, we have NHIF in our country. Us as an institution now take it up and try to support and maybe be able to pay the national uh, health scheme for them, which is not high. It's, it's, it's just 500 Kenya shillings uh, every month. So that's what basically we really do. And I realized in giving, somehow it opens a door for you. More opportunities come. And uh, because when we started giving out, our, our the, the community, we got to move out and people got to see us and more clients even came. So we got more increase from the giving. So it wasn't like we are losing. It's an aspect for us to grow. And one amazing thing that I, I, I tried to look out, because we are now five years old, we are still growing. For the time that we have had, we, we also have elderly women in our group. But for the five years, all of them, they are all alive. I mean, it's, when I look back, it, it looks small, but we have not lost any of our clients. It was such an amazing thing. And I realized when we give, there's long life that we get to have. There's abundance that we get to have. So I'll encourage you, even if you, it's, it's not that what you have, it's, it's the heart that you're willing to share an extra coin with a needy person, just an extra coin or, or something, mostly food, you just be a blessing to them. And in return, you get abundance of blessing. Also, even for us at Outfest, we give free lectures to um, our channel members 
and to the community, especially about looking after money. And we teach people yeah. how to look after money and to, to learn to invest. Because most people, they want to invest, but they don't know how. They know how to earn the money, but they don't know how to look after it once they have the money. Uh, oh, so it's yeah. one thing to, uh, to, uh, to wish if you had money and then you get the job eventually. Mm -hmm. What then do mm -hmm. you do once you are paid? So most people blow the funds that they are paid. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. after working so many years, they start thinking, oh, if I wish I had saved some. So we try to make sure that people don't regret. Uh, they use this opportunity that they have to learn about money uh, because money and life are tied together. So we try to give free lectures so that to as many people as possible and provide a free advice uh, so that people can learn and also transform their lives. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you. We Giving is a very good opportunity. We also have found uh, business and get, got introduced because of uh, uh, free things that we're giving uh, out to people. Yeah. People got to know us. Yeah. Based on my my work, one key thing I've really uh, gotten to have it as my core value is integrity. Integrity is key because these women entrust you with money and uh, if you don't deliver to them, I mean, you lose a lot and you, you really lose even the trust with them. So integrity is key. The other thing is excellence. We work with excellence. Despite them being in the rural areas, we, we, we try, we work our best to make sure we serve them with excellence. And quality is another thing. We, don't, we, we just don't go and buy any other stuff. We buy things that are quality. Yes, the pricing might be high, but we realized when we buy quality things, we cut on cost in terms that we don't, the plants don't have to return goods back to us because the things are of low quality. So they'll prefer to buy with, I mean, with an increased price rather than going for a low quality product. So those three things are the key things that really has, uh, that has become part of me and is also the core values in our institution yeah yeah well said i think delivering with quality is very important i found that it's very useful when my clients know that i will take them through and i'm supporting them through and through up to the end and mm -hmm. um the, the results that i have promised that they, they will see at the end if they meet what their expectations were so that's how we've been able to uh, get more clients because people refer us to other uh, uh people as well because they were satisfied. So I, I like yeah. it, uh, especially if people get the right quality, but also they have confidence and, and trust in the, uh, in the in the service that we provide. We're coming to the end of uh, this uh, session. So I want us to turn our attention to other areas as well that are obviously uh, very important in a, in a business. How do you grow a business? Because obviously at one point you started off uh, small and of, uh, nowadays we have a, a new generation of people. Uh, they say Gen X, there's Gen Z and so on and so forth. Uh, they have a different sense of time. So when you talk to them, for example, in my case, when I talk to them about investment, their view is that if they give me if, um, money or if they put money in an investment that I recommend to them, they should be able to get their profit by the end of the month. They should then start harvesting the results. So this is inbuilt in their mind. And yet when I'm talking about investment, I'm talking about a period of five years and more. Uh, so how have you been able to grow a business and deal with this time lag that is there between planting and growing your capital to actually starting to harvest? Wow, this is a good question as well. Uh, I think with each generation, as you said, it's quite different. And uh, for us millenniums, we are told we, we have a different, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if to call it a myth, yeah, but the things that we are told, this is our generation. But I think something that cuts on on all online, in, even as I listen to people who started businesses long time and they are, they are gone, there's one thing that cuts across is like is is that things take time. You don't really plant a seed now and expect to harvest the following day. There's a process of planting, and then the rain will come, and then the plant will grow, and then at, uh, maybe after several months, the harvest will come. So it's the same thing with business. 
there's no shortcut to business. That you plan today, you invest your money today, and tomorrow you expect a result. No. And that does not mean that you, 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 you don't invest wisely. You need to really invest wisely. I'm glad that Ernest is really taking you through the investment options that you have to take. But it's all about investing wisely and giving it time. Because if you want a good return, it has to take time. Short term, short term uh, returns, they, 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 they have low, low yield. By, but high term, I mean, long term returns have, have high yield. So for this generation that we are in, that uh, the new generation, it, it's, it is an aspect of giving yourself time. Even a child is not born today and tomorrow they start working. It's a process. So in this investment, it's all about time. Give yourself time. Even as you get to learn, sometimes you'll fall. Accept falling. You make mistakes, but learn from it and raise up and go. That is the process still of growth that you have to venture into. Yeah. Yes, true. There is the process. I think there is the law of process. And processes mm -hmm. take time. And processes have yeah. steps. And though each step cannot be skipped. And in most cases, if you skip some of the processes, you might need go to back. go back again and take exactly. and check them until you understand. And sometimes yeah, sure. passing through process does not necessarily mean you have understood. You might need to, uh, to go back and take it and take it until you actually get it. Uh, yeah. Then you can be able to move forward. It's a painful part of growth uh, and yet yeah. it's very critical. Uh, it's yeah. part of investing uh, because sometimes we want to put money into an investment and we see the results tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't really work. And in mm -hmm. investment on this, stock market, it is possible to get a, a, a quick return. But if it conditions someone into thinking that is, that is how it always works, yeah. you can actually make a big mistake. Mm -hmm. um, investing into any business takes a bit of time. And it's a painful yeah. period uh, of growth because mm -hmm. along that period, there is a lot of pain that goes in, um, mm -hmm. uh, that you have to go through that period. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of learning and a self-examination yeah. as well, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is not very easy and it's not palatable for uh, some people as well. Uh, exactly. Especially the people who are prepared to quit at any moment. Uh, if you don't uh, have the patience and there's a word that you used earlier on which is resilience uh, it's a very important word you need to mm -hmm. be resilient because sometimes things are against you uh, mm -hmm. the process is not working according to your time according to your mm -hmm. clock uh, mm -hmm. when it's not working according to your clock sometimes the lesson is that you need to learn the law of process and and wait uh, yeah. but like someone said, life is easy to understand when you look back. And that's how we mm -hmm. live life. We live life looking backwards. Mm -hmm. And we, we, every time we look backwards, we quickly understand. But it's very yeah. hard for us to live life looking forward because we don't see anything and we don't learn anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just why we make mistakes today mm -hmm. and we get the lesson the, the next day. I want us to move to the final question for today. And thank you so much yeah. for sharing with our, our team members uh, uh, you, your, your business experience. Uh, obviously, we on this channel, we try to bring as many post speakers as possible so that we can share uh, experience across uh, the different groups of people who are involved in different things. So thank mm -hmm. you very much for this chance that you have given us. Uh, one final mm -hmm. question. You as a leader, what describes you? How, how do people describe you? Yeah. Okay, let me give you a clue of what I'm yeah. talking about. If you yes, were, yes. If you were a, a, an animal in the Serengeti uh, uh, game park, which animal would uh, you be? Gazelle. Uh, why I say gazelle? Because uh, gazelle is swift. It's a, just a tender. Just like my name is Dorcas. Dorcas means gazelle. Uh, okay. Swift and uh, tender and beautiful as well. Yeah, beautiful in the heart and also outside. That's how I describe myself. So, so in terms of being swift, what, 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 what particular aspect of your business, uh, how does that relate to your business and where do you use the swiftness? Uh, when I make a decision, I go for it. And recently I've been learning, uh, because sometimes we do a lot of cross-cutting. You, you say, tomorrow I'm going to do this. You, 
tomorrow. But uh, with the swiftness, it's a now thing. If I make a decision or, or I want something done, it's now. It's, it doesn't wait until tomorrow. So I do it a now now. And that one has happened with, with my past experience. Because of fear, I will procrastinate and push things forward and then realize things are not being done. Yeah, And, and then I'll, I'll be having a lot of work piled up because I kept on postponing. But with the swiftness, I decided now is it's a, it's a now thing, not tomorrow. I decide I'm going to do something, it's now, not tomorrow. Well, thanks very much, uh, uh, Dorcas. It has been uh, a pleasure uh, talking to you and sharing with our viewers. We hope our viewers will learn from you.